Hello, welcome to this tutorial covering Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, the administration and navigation for your object storage in relation to your enterprise SaaS service. We'll first look at several slides and to give some of the basic concepts on object storage, and then we'll move over to a quick uh, demo in object storage area of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and look at the objects mentioned. You'll remember that you can navigate over to the uh, object storage and OCI user interface via the compute tile on your cloud account. Uh, the three dot menu will take you over to the uh, service console. Uh, when object storage is first created, it's essentially an empty shell. Uh, and we have a initial setup that creates a number of objects that are a good starting point for connecting the application environments to object storage. You can then manage and change that as necessary uh, during your implementation. And uh, the other thing to note is that identity for object storage is separate really from the identity when you're managing for enterprise SaaS. So there's some similar concepts, but um, essentially people will, the people who are accessing object storage will have separate logins and separate user, uh, user records for, for that. First, I'd like to talk about the basic building blocks of object storage. So there's basically just two, uh, two words you need to know about this, it is compartments and buckets. Um, Compartment is simply a logical structuring mechanism. Uh, and then a compartment can have multiple buckets. The files and objects are always stored in buckets. Okay, so a compartment does not store any files, it just is a container for the buckets that you want under that organizational structure. Uh, a couple things to note is that a compartment uh, must have a unique name across your tenancy. Um, likewise, the buckets must have unique names. The uh, compartments can have child compartments, or uh, as we see in compartment B here, the compartment B has both child bucket and child compartments, and then buckets under those child compartments. Uh, buckets cannot have any children, however. They're the leaf node of the, of the tree. The other thing is that there is a unique identifier given to each thing that you create. So each compartment has a unique identifier and that's referred to as an OCID. And we'll see those in the, in the demo shortly. Okay, once you have compartments, then the next question is how do you grant rights to use those compartments? And the, this is a brief uh, overview of that, uh, of the structures that are used. So essentially um, access is via what a group, uh, that a user must be part of a group to have access. And then the group uh, is referred to in various policies. Uh, so it's really the policies that, that, that specify the rules of what a group can do against one or more compartments, okay? And um, so in our uh, setup, initial setup structure, we actually create uh, several groups and several policies to go along with those groups so that um, you have a useful starting point. And then when you create actual human users that need to access object storage to, to upload files or download files, you assign them to, to appropriate groups to give access. And that's kind of the indirect linkage that group membership gives you the access to compartments. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, from the compute tile, you can do the open service console and that will take you over to uh, the OCI windows and object storage in particular. So let's go and look at that. Here I'm switching over to my browser. I've accessed my object storage. And so it looks uh, something like this, that uh, object storage, we here have a view of buckets in a particular compartment. We create one called the shared compartment for each of our services. This happens to be customer cloud service. Um, 
these are this is to store files that might be used across multiple of the environments of CCS. So it might be for configuration migration, uh, CMA use purposes to move configuration from dev to test, for example, might also be used for conversion data conversion purposes, uh, uploading data to be processed into the system. You can change which compartment you're looking at via this dropdown. Um, so, you, so we also create a couple other uh, top level compartments for production and non-production uh, environment usage. And then you can see the root on top here. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to, if you look at root, the root compartment basically does not have any buckets in it. We don't create any buckets there, we create them all down below. Okay, next let's then look at um, the, uh, how you administer and, and kind of change the setup and, and create the, uh, the building blocks for access. And that's access through this top uh, left menu. We are in the object storage area here. Uh, note that there are other, many other infrastructure services that can be accessed through the same menu, but we just kind of care about object storage in this case. You may use other, other services too. And then from an administration point of view, the menu items that you're interested in down here under governance and administration are, for the most part, identity gives you access to most of them. And then occasionally you, you might need administration for the tenancy details. So let's review the identity menu options. And why don't we start with compartments? So the compartment setup. Here we show a listing of the, what, the, what compartments are available. That kind of corresponds to what we had seen in that dropdown before. The three main um, uh, compartments that we've created are these three that we've seen. So CCS shared is one of them. I mentioned before that each compartment has an OCID, unique identifier, that's shown, the end of which is shown here. If you click on it, it'll show you the entire, uh, the entire key or OCID and you, sometimes you need reference to that. So we'll note that the shared compartment ends in EPQ. We'll see that again in a moment. Um, but if you needed to create compartments, you would do it through here, and basically it's just a, a name and a description. Um, and you can click on one of these compartments to, to see further details. Um, note that you can create child compartments under a, under a top-level compartment from here. Okay. And then um, now let's go back to the identity and, and look at groups next. So we create four, four groups. Administrators is kind of this top level group and anybody in the administrator group kind of has full access to do any, anything, right? But most, most users who are actually using the system who are not administrators will have limited, much more limited rights. So they won't be able to create groups and compartments and so forth but they will be able to manage files and objects. Now we divided these by two dimensions. One dimension is human users, like myself, <laughs> versus application users, which represent, an application user represents one environment and its access to object storage. So, you know, the dev environment will have a, a, a uh, access and, for the dev environment to have access, we need to have a group that defines what access should a dev environment have to object storage, and that'll actually be defined as policies related to this group for application non-production, since dev is not production. Um, if we go into one of these groups, uh, we will be able to see what are the group members, so who's attached to that group. We'll talk about users in a moment, but we can see that there are two uh, users uh, as members in the group, and basically these are the application representing the two non-production environments of the application. So dev and test are members of this group. Now next, we can go backwards a bit and look at the policies that we create that are tied to and give the access to uh, the access rights on what somebody what a user linked to a group can do. So to follow through on our example, for application, non-production, 
So our dev and test environments, what should they be able to do? Well, that's defined by this policy, which we gave the same name as the group, just to kind of make, make the connection between them easier. And that policy has four statements. If we drill into the policy, we can actually look at the statements. Uh, the statements are basically human readable that say that we allow the group of the same name, uh, object storage application, non-prod access, to be able to read buckets in the tenancy where the compartment is equal to, and notice it's got that EPQ on these two. So that's the shared compartment. So it says that any user in this group can read buckets in shared compartment and can also manage objects except for deletion. So the application can't delete anything. It can, it can add things and read things, but not delete them. Uh, again, in the shared compartment. Then the other two line items are for the non-production uh, group uh, or compartment. So all the non-production file, uh, files and objects. Here we get, again, give rights to the application, but not to delete anything, okay? And you could, you know, you could add or change, create new policies, new statements, but this is our starting point. And then finally, if we look at our users, which is kind of the default view and identity, we see that we've got a user for each environment that is created. So this would be our standard three, dev, test, and prod. Um, and then we also can have human, human users, um, such as myself here. Um, and I, since I'm a human user, I would be a member of a group uh, for, for human users. So if I go into human user, non-prod access, I see that I'm a group member here, along with another person, but the app, no application users are listed here because this is meant for people. Okay, so um, that's a quick uh, review and navigation overview of where the key objects are found in object storage in OCI. And uh, other tutorials will get into the exact details of the setup that uh, is needed to link the application environment to, get to the access represented by these users. Um, and that involves a combination of working both in the application environment and in this uh, object storage user interface. So we'll cover that in a separate session on uh, the, the identity setup uh, for object storage. Okay, and thank you very much.